Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. If you're back and you're watching me, what do you have to lose? Hit the subscribe button. It's free, does not cost you anything. So hit the subscribe button. And if you're returning, hit the likes button. And if you're passing through, hit the likes button and the subscribe button. And so thank you all for joining me today. I know you all have probably heard of this story because it's been all over the news as well as YouTube. So if you've heard about it, you can go ahead and click off because I don't want to hear you saying, oh, we've heard about this and don't leave a comment saying that. So I'm discussing it on my channel because I found that it was intriguing, especially because it is a pastor. And when we when I hear these stories about all of the pastors, it's, it's just really intriguing to me because this is a story about a young lady that was groomed in the church. She had met this pastor, John Paul Miller, when she was 14. And she was a young adult in the church. And I believe that she was on the praise and worship team in his church. And she, um, he, they, she said that they became best friends. Now, I believe he was... Uh, in his 20s uh, when they were best friends. And I thought, how can you be best friends with somebody who was 14 and you're 23? I thought that is just strange to me. You're an adult and she is a young child. So sounds strange. Anyway, they would go on to get married and he would, he had children from a previous marriage. And so there was a lot of, um, from what she goes on to say, a lot of uh, abuse going on in this relationship. Um, so sh there's a lot of twists and turn turns that go on um, in this marriage that we're going to get into and that the video, I have lots of video and I'm sure that you've heard it um, throughout the story. This young lady was unalived or unalived on uh, April 27th. And um, just two days prior to this, she had filed a protective order against this husband. And then two days later, she was unalived. And so we'll get into this. So I'm going to share a couple of her Facebook videos and then a couple of her family members, her sisters, had uh, said that she feared for her life. Uh, she was very uh, afraid of this uh, pastor, which slashed husband. And I'm also going to share, which I'm sure that you all have seen, just some of his, you know, when he announced her, un, when he announced that she was unalived and how he just said it with so, with less empathy. He had no empathy for it at all. But then when he did some of the news interviews, he, to in my opinion, had crocodile tears. And so we're going to get to some of those videos, but I just wanted to kind of go into a little bit of detail and give, you know, some of my opinion. So we're going to get into it. I do have to remind you that I do have to uh, stop a little bit and give commentary. I know that I used to get upset when I'd watch YouTube videos and they'd stop the video and I'm like, can you just play the video, please? I stop interrupting, but I know now that you do have to stop. Um, for copyright uh, purposes. So I am going to get into, I think I'm going to go ahead and play uh, the first video. I'm going to go onto her Facebook page and just kind of share some of her um, videos that she posted on there. And she was such a God-fearing woman. So I know that, you know, being a God-fearing woman, you know, it teaches in the Bible that you don't unalive yourself. And you don't, it's just, you know, that's, that's just something that you don't do. I also know that when you're going through 
some very dark times that you and sometimes you feel so alone um, that I was a person that was um, in an abusive relationship. And sometimes you just feel so alone because they're, they're, you're just being, you're stopped and you're just, sometimes you just, you're just like, my gosh, you know, what do you do? Because you're just being stopped. And this guy from what we were told, allegedly told by some of the stories that were given out that this guy put trackers on her car and that he, um, what she would often come out to her car and her tires would be slashed. Um, she would, uh, she was being followed. So just different things were being done. She, her, her, uh, the place where she was staying had gotten broken into several times and she was left to kind of, you know, stay with friends, you know, friends were hiding her, um, you know, those types of things. And I know from, from, from experiences myself that, you know, it gets overwhelming. So I'm not going to say here or there if she unalived herself or if it, you know, someone if did it. Um, to me, if there was a protective order taken out 48 hours prior, it just sounds a little strange to me. And that's my opinion. Um, please leave comments down. I'm open to comments. I would love to get your feedback on this. Uh, but to me, I just don't feel like, you know, you're, you're taking out a protective order and then, you know, two days later you just say, okay, I'm, you know, I'm over it. I don't know, but let's play some of her, uh, her Facebook, um, comp, um, videos and we can go from there and discuss it. So I'm going to share the screen with you all. And we'll do her Facebook. And this is just her happy-go-lucky self here. Into this country where we have job opportunities that are better than what I've witnessed in other countries. Um, I remember driving past a man sitting on a giant rock and he had like a chisel and a hammer. And I asked the people that we were with, what is that man doing? And they said, that is his job. He finds a big boulder in the wild and um, he beats it into littler rocks and then beats those rocks into littler rocks. And then he bags up all the rocks and he puts them in a wheelbarrow and he takes them into town and he tries to sell them for landscape, for construction, whatever. So if you have a job that's better than that, be so thankful today. <laughs> Let me go back here. Okay, let's see what else here. Bear with me here. I'm going to have to go back into my Facebook page again. So just bear with me as I go back into my Facebook here. Okay, there we go. And I gotta search again. Okay. 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 
Let's see here. Okay. Now, I am going to now share some more video with you all. Uh -oh. Let's see. She was just such a... Uh, I was just kind of battling thoughts of just kind of like human thoughts, you know, things that you want to do. Uh, and it's just a fleeting thought, you know. And um, then this song came to my mind because it says, you know, uh, bless those who curse you, pray for your enemies, things like that. And so uh, I just wanted to sing this really quick and see if it encourages you. I hope it does. Um, but it's uh, it says. I pray for your healing. The circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So pray for those who curse you. Bless those who curse you. Speak well of those who, who are not speaking well over you because God sees all, God hears all, he knows all. And if you keep your heart right and his will be done, not yours, it's all going to work out. So I hope it encourages you today. Wow. Wow. What a beautiful voice, first of all. What a, uh, you know, if someone out there needed to hear that, um, wow. Just a, you know, that is, and that is so true. When people um, curse you, you know, it's hard to, to, um, you know, forgive those that, uh, those people that do curse you. It's, it's very hard. I, I was, I'm trying to find this one where she does talk about, uh, the abuse and I guess they might've taken it down. I had it up earlier and I'm like, oh my gosh. But she, let's see. Um, search. Um, there it is there. Why isn't it showing it? Videos. Oh, there it is here. This is it. Yeah. So today my heart's a little heavy. Um, I've had a lot of women that have reached out to me about um, situations of abuse. And I just want to tell you what a lot of people have told me uh, lately and reminded me because I think I forgot. I knew, but I for I pushed it in the back of my head um, just because of my situation. Um, but you are the bride of Christ before anybody else's bride, male or female, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what what uh, gender you are. Abuse is abuse. And you are the bride of Christ. And my Bible says that he took all the abuse you could think of for you so that you didn't have to live that life of slavery and bondage and pain. 
Jesus took it all for you. So you don't have to stay in a abusive relationship, whether that's um, sexual, whether that's uh, somebody forcing you to take illegal drugs or alcohol abuse or physical abuse, uh, psychological abuse, making you think that this is all your fault or you're a bad mom or you're a bad wife or you're a bad husband or you're, um, you're not giving it your all when you know you are. God hates divorce, but why? According to everybody I've asked and the, the scriptures that I've found, it's because it hurts people. But does abuse hurt people? How do you think God feels about that? So I want to remind you, like a bunch of people have been reminding me lately, that I'm God's pride first. And even an earthly spouse who's a good spouse, when they know that their bride is being hurt, just imagine what an earthly spouse does. What do you think your heavenly spouse does? When you're the bride of Christ and he sees his bride going through abuse and hurt, what do you think he thinks about that? So encouragement in all this is you are the bride of Christ first before anybody else's. And he's got you. And he sees you. And he loves you. Okay, so to me, that doesn't seem like someone that um, is going to unalive themselves. That seems like someone that is speaking encouragement to herself, that her friends are gathering around her and telling her, you know what, you don't have to suffer this, this abuse anymore. You know, you don't have to take what's going on. And that, that someone that's trying to get their lives back together after she's filed for a divorce. And it's been, it was a month in that she filed for a divorce and she was trying to get her life back together. She was, she was making herself strong after it seemed that she had been beat down after all of the, the abuse that this, this guy had given her. And she was trying to, to find her way back. And she, she sought her encouragement in her faith and knew that, that God was watching every move that this, this man of God that stood up there every Sunday and, and took an oath, took an oath to God. Because I hold preachers and ordained ministers to a higher standard. And I'm not saying that they're above anybody, but when you take an oath and you stand in, in, in a pulpit and you take that oath to God, I think that he holds you to a higher standard. And when you're sitting and you're, you're not, and I'm not meaning to get off, off topic from this, but when any pastor takes an oath to stand in a pulpit and to preach the word from the Bible to anyone, they take that higher standard and to preach that word to all of us, to, to, to sinners, and, and they're trying to reach people, and they're trying to reach those broken people. And when you're sitting here and you're taking advantage of 14 year olds or you're, you're, you're having um, relationships that you should not be having and you're lying and you're, you're, you're assassinating characters and you're, you're, you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing. God holds you to a higher standard. And when you're abusing your wives and you're, you're abusing your children, God sees that. And I believe that's what she was saying. 
that God sees what you're doing and he holds you accountable to that. Not saying that he doesn't see all of us. He doesn't see all of our sins, but he holds you pastors to a higher standard. And I believe that this 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 young lady was was a a God fearing woman with a beautiful heart and a beautiful beautiful voice. And I don't feel in my heart that she would go and and then unalive herself. I don't believe that she would do that. Yeah, she you know she her husband or this guy that she was married to, I'm going to say, said that she was depressed and that she um, had tried to unalive herself before. He said that she had done, you know, tried this before. Um, he also said in a news uh, conference that uh, she, they spoke on the, they would talk every night together. Well, how the heck did you talk every night together when you were divorcing? You weren't together. She was hiding from you. How were, how was she the best wife when she wasn't with you? I don't get that. I don't understand that. How was she the best wife when she, when she put a protective order against you? And you were seen just days after her death with another woman in a restaurant enjoying yourself. Tell me. I'm sorry. I don't get it. So I don't think that she was depressed. I think, I mean, she told her family and her family has said this, that she wasn't depressed. And she had told, uh, you know, friends, I'm not depressed. He had her put in a, you know, a mental institution and for depression. And she said that she was never depressed. You know, there's things that go on about, you know, like this all the time that innocent people are locked away because their spouses or because, um, you know, loved ones, mothers or, or, you know, um, family members have their loved ones locked up and they're not even depressed or nothing's wrong with them. They have them locked up and there's nothing wrong with them. And there was nothing wrong probably with this girl. Every, all of us get, have a sad day. All of us ha go through a, a time of, of depression because something goes wrong in our lives. And we, we take that time to, to, to have that bout where we have bad days and we have bad moments and we have bad seasons. have a, a problem to where we need to be internet. So if, if I've stopped, I'm sorry, but we all have a bad moment. And I just, you know, I don't think that, you know, she had a, a depression problem because she said that she didn't. Was she going through some things because she was going through this divorce? Yes. And she was trying to find her way. You know, she was trying to find her way to get past all of this that was going on. So I don't think, you know, yes, that would make any of us, you know, feel a certain way. So I just don't believe that all of a sudden she went out and she said, you know, I'm done when she just got a protective order 48 hours before this all happened. So I think that this needs to be looked into a little further, but I'm going to play this clip with the pastor. And I'm not even going to call him a pastor because I really don't 
feel in my spirit that something, I just feel something's not right. So I'm going to play this clip with him saying, sharing with his congregation about um, when announcing to his congregation, and then we'll talk about that. Your feet. Um, before I make the announcement, I also want to say that um, my request to you is that you will continue to come to church and serve and give um, for the next, you know, little bit. I don't want to have, I'm taking a little bit of a break and I don't want to have to worry about the church. My break may be a few days, a few weeks. I don't know. Um, I got a call late last night. My wife has passed away. And yeah, and it was, uh, it was self-induced and it was uh, up in North Carolina. And um, we're going to have a funeral for her next Sunday here at 3 p.m. And so um, it's, it's all I can, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of going on um, adrenaline right now. So y'all pray for me and my kids and everybody. And uh, she was, she wasn't, y'all knew that she wasn't well mentally. And then uh, she needed the medicine that was hard to get to her. And so um, I'm sure there'll be more details to come. But um, just keep our family in your prayers. And I'm going to let Pastor Randall, my bishop, uh, he can pray. I get a microphone to pray out. And if you have anything you want to share as well, uh, I appreciate it. And if so, what would they And now I'm going to play the um, 911 um, <clears throat> tape that they just, the, the 911 call that just came out today. Now, he had no empathy, I think, in this. You know, he comes out with, you know, um, 